Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That very first portion, Apostle Paul says, Now may the God of peace himself. Why did he have to include the word himself? Because he wanted to really allow us to understand how personal this is for God. God is very personable God. God is very interested in everything that you go through and everything that I go through in life. So he says, may the God of peace, when we're stressed out, when we're worried, we need his peace. But it says, may the God of peace himself sanctify you partially. Sanctify you parts and areas of your life. No, he says completely. May the God himself, may your particular God, may God who God is to you, may himself wholly sanctify you. Means he wants to deal with every single part of your life, which we've learned in the past few weeks. We are a three-part body, right? We have our mind, we have our soul, and we have this body. We're three parts people. We have the spirit of God, right? And the body is just the vessel that everything kind of carries within it. And God says, I want to sanctify every single one of those areas of your life. Not one is more important than the other. They are all equally important. And there are a couple of symptoms that you and I need to be aware of. Number one, extreme fatigue. This is when the type of person struggles on getting up in the morning. They don't want to think. They don't want to feel. They don't want to do anything. They are the type of person that you give them a bad news and they don't even act upon it anymore because they're already at that stage where they're kind of just tapped out. And maybe something where you, you're expecting them to do something, they may be not do anything, but mentally they're already in a whole nother place. When you don't want to do anything, when you are nothing really encourages to do nothing, those are the signs of what, what does the world call that? Fatigue, but it's called depression, right? I work in the medical field, and you don't know how many people on a daily basis I see that I have to put on their medical alerts, psychiatric care, the medications they take for anxiety, depression, they can't function without it. Medications like Adderall, if not, they can't do anything. But Adderall, one of the side effects of Adderall is suicidal thoughts, but it's supposedly to help them not have suicidal thoughts. It's crazy, and they take it understanding that. But that's what the world does, right? But it's a sign. It is real. The church cannot act like this is not real. This is in your head. This is just you're making it up. You just need to pray about it. No, this is real. And this is why we're talking about it this morning, because it is one of the symptoms. When you feel like you don't want to do anything, when you feel like you don't want to get out of bed, when you get into that place where you just want to stay there and you don't care about anything or anyone that happens, that is a sign that there's extreme fatigue happening. And the Spirit of God is trying to let you know, listen, it's come to a point where now even your body is drained and we need to do something about it. That is not the way that you and I were designed to live. Number two, a mental state of negativity. It's a person that is, everything is negative. You tell them, we're going to change, we're going to do something. Ah, that didn't work last time. No, we've done that before. No, I don't want to do that. No, that's not going to work. Have you met people like that? Have you yourself falling into that state too? Right? Where you're like, We've already done this so many times, I don't want to do this again. We're going to start over again. And the negativity starts to creep in, and we don't even think about it, but it becomes a part of us. Nothing is going to ever work. Nothing is really going to ever do anything. Your mentor, your leader is trying to lift you up, and you're like, no, no, it's not going to do anything. This is just, it's just not going to work. The third sign is when you low, you low your, your, slow down your level of productivity. You don't do anymore. You used to serve in church, now you don't serve. You start to back away from the things that you used to love to do, now you don't do them anymore. Even at home, you used to love to spend time with your family, you used to love to go to places, you don't want to do that anymore. You just want to lay back and do nothing. You don't care about anything. Your productivity level has now dropped. You go to work, you used to be the first one at work, now you're the last one. 
You used to be the one that had the initiative to do everything. Now you're just going to wait and just ride the wave until someone tells you to do something. You lower your level of productivity. And today, we need to talk about what steps can we take when we see and we realize those first three symptoms. There could be many more, but usually a lot of them just kind of fall into the same category. So you may ask, well, okay, so how can I break this? Maybe you know somebody. How can I help someone break out of this? And the word and the answer to that, his name is Jesus. But through Jesus, we find what? Deliverance. Because what is deliverance to us as his children? Is to set us free? Is the bread of every day. Many times we think that because we're Christians and we're in ministry and when you need deliverance, that means it's sin. That means there's something really bad happening. You don't come to the retreat because I already did that once and, you know, if I come to the retreat again, they're going to think that there's something wrong with me and I'm more worried about what everybody else thinks but what I truly need. When an inner healing deliverance retreat is not for anyone, it's not a particular thing. It's just if you need it, you come to it. I love when I come to, to serve in the inner healing retreats and I see servers, I see deacons, I see ushers just taking the front row and they just receive. There's nothing wrong with that. But many times, many times you hear the whispers of other people that are taking judgment. But you can't let that stop you. If you come and you realize that you have a couple of these things happening in your life and you don't know how to break out of it, you need the deliverance in your life. The deliverance is your, your bread, your daily bread. And if you need a little, a little reset, then you go to your pastor, you go to your leaders, you can call the office, you can schedule your one-on-one, -on -one, you can come to Inner Healing Retreat. You're in a ministry that gives you the opportunities, the options to be able to help you. You're in a ministry that trains you to be able to do this eventually yourself. It's not bad to come to an Inner Healing Retreat, but you can deliver yourself. The Word of God says that because of the lack of knowledge, people perish, right? People got stuck because they didn't know. In this house, there's all types of schools. There's a school for everything. There's a training for everything. There's always something happening because we understand that if you don't know how to do it, you're not going to be able to get there. And the whole point is for you to realize that this is for you. For you to live your daily life, not just for you to live once a month, once a year. It's for you to live and to walk in it every day. So number one, how can we be set free? We got to talk about it. Why is it so difficult for us to be honest with where we are at? Why is it so difficult to communicate, process what you're going through? process those feelings. When we sit down with our disciples and they're going through something, I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. How do you feel? Because I, I understand that we need to talk. We need to process. I feel this way. I feel discouraged. This happened. So-and-so did this, and this made me feel this way. Why? Because if we talk about it, we begin to now realize and take ownership and understand where we are at so that then we can deal with it. But many times we get so spiritual, I'll just fast. A plus B equals C. I'll just do this. I'll just, you know, I'll just pray a little more and it's going to go away. But sometimes that's not the case because that's just pride speaking. That's because you don't want to come clean to someone. That's your pride that the enemy is using to hold you back from your deliverance. You don't want to talk about it. If I tell my mentor, they're going to think that I'm not ready and that I'm not being a good leader, so they're not going to let me do something else. See how the enemy starts to take a role, even with ministry. If I come to a pastor and I tell him that I'm struggling with something, then he's going to say I'm not a good pastor. That's not the case. Because we are in a human body. It's not our weakness. We are in a human body, but it's not designed to be a weakness. It's just designed for you to realize this is where I'm at. This is how I feel. The only thing is you can stay there. The purpose is for you to acknowledge this is how I feel. Let's talk about it. What are we going to do with it and what adjustments can we make? If we need the help, reach out to your pastor. Reach out to a spiritual guide. You don't reach out to your friend. How can your friend help you get somewhere they've never been? What if your friend is feeling the same way and now we have a gossip party? We have a pity party, so now I just need my friend to have a pity party with me. That's not what you need. You need to go to the person that you know is going to tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it. 
That's the type of people that you and I should surround ourselves with on a daily basis. I'm going to call the person that I know is going to tell me the truth. I'm not going to go to the friend that's going to pat me on the back and say, oh, Pastor, es que you go through so much. You do so much. It's okay. You're human. It's okay. I don't need that. I need someone to slap me in the back and say, okay, tough it up. You know what you got to do. Apply the word of God. Go pray. Go fast. Go talk to apostle. Do what you got to do. But let's do something about it. Let's find the help. What does the word of God say in the book of John chapter 8 verse 36? For if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Who's setting you free? Jesus is not your pastor, is not your leader, is not your mentor, is not your friend, is not your mom, is not your dad. It says, he who the one who sets you free is free indeed. The son of God is the one that sets you free. But your pastor, your mentor, your leader is there to help you to that process. But we don't do anything for you. We are just simply the ones that grab you, lead you, and take you right back up to Jesus and say, let's talk about it together. Let's deal with it together. We need to at times be ministered. We need to at times need that inner healing deliverance. We need to at times need to have that restart button. But something that I really learned that I wanted to highlight today was on the deliverance that needs to happen in our mind. Because that's where the source of that really lies on. The mind that starts to capture the thoughts, we allow the thoughts to simmer in our mind. We start to share it with other people. They share their thoughts about it. Now we have two negative people talking about a situation. And then that just simmers in there until it gets to your heart. Once it reaches to your heart, now it's going to give fruit. And it's not a godly fruit. So let's talk about the type of mind that we have. We have three types of mind. We have a soulish mind. We have a carnal mind. We have a curated mind. And that's actually four. And we have our spiritual mind. So on the first type of mind, that soulish mind, that is a combination of the natural and the spiritual. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And the word of God says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This scripture should be like an anthem. Every time a thought comes to your mind, the word of God gives you what to do with it. It says, you cast down the argument. Every high thing. What is every high thing? Anything that tries to go above God himself. Anything that tries to be above God needs to be brought down. Anything that exalts itself, your pride, your ego, it needs to be brought down into the knowledge of God. And then it says bring down into captivity. So you take the ownership. You talk about it with your mentor, your leader. You go with the help that you need because you got to grab that mindset and you have to take it into captivity. See, we can't do that for you. You have to do that for yourself. I take my mind. I take every thought that does not belong to God, that is from this world, it's from the enemy. I take it captive and then I grab it and I put it to the obedience of Christ. I don't keep it to myself. I don't hide it. I take it captive and I bring it to the obedience of Christ. Because the soulish mind is a combination of both, right? Because we need the spiritual to give us the exit. How do we get out of it? How can I break free from what is trying to bind me? It's trying to hold me captive. That lie becomes your truth. That means it becomes a stronghold. Do you know what happens when you have a stronghold in your mind? The enemy brings lies to you so many times until you believe them. And that lie becomes your truth. That's why we need the word of God. Because the truth is what breaks it. Because you're going to stick to your truth. And you're going to believe that you're doing it right. But it's a lie. Because it's not aligned to the word of God. So he says you got to take it captive. You got to recognize it. You got to realize this is not aligned to the word of God. I got to take it captive, and I have to give it to the obedience of Christ, meaning I need his mind to now become my mind. I need this mental 
barrier that I'm having that's not allowing me to grow, that's not allowing me to shake off the negativity, it's not allowing me to shake up the discouragement, it's not allowing me to shake up all of the bad things that I'm trying to carry on a day-to-day, I need to put it back to Jesus and say, I need your mindset to now become my mindset. We got to recognize that. We have our carnal mind. What does Romans 8, 6, 7 says? This is a consumed with thoughts and the carnal desires. This type of mindset is the one that if you and I allow to settle there, is a type of mindset that begins to take over our lives. And with this type of thought process is where you start to make all the bad decisions that you shouldn't be making. Romans 8, 6, 7. Let me find it on my phone. Is there? For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to spiritually minded is life and peace. Seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. When you're saturated with the flesh desires... Meaning you're dealing with some stuff that you just can't seem to shake off. We have people that sometimes will come and say, I want to do the right thing. I just don't know why I can't. They have wondering eyes. Always looking where they shouldn't be looking. Desiring things that they should not be desiring. But they're spending their time looking at the social media Bombarding their minds with all of this world desires of having the newest things, wanting the newest things, being always on top, having this flesh desires and these things that become more important than God himself. This is a carnal mind. And it says in the verse 6 that this equals death. It's enmity. You're coming against God. Do you realize that? When the enemy grabs a hold of that and gives us and allows, we allow him to, to settle down into our mind to only go after the things that are away from God, we now become against God. Your thought processes are now against God. Your decisions will eventually become against God. Now it's better to go work an extra hour, an extra job before coming to church because you need more money because you want something. So instead of going to the word of God, we go and we do things. We're feeling lonely. We're feeling like, you know, we need a companionship. So we go and we find a guy or vice versa. You go and you find a girl. But it's not one that's leading you to the will of God. It's not one that's establishing the word of God in your life. Because if that person was establishing the word of God in your life, that person would tell you and they would back off and say, let's go pray about this first. But I assure you, they don't. They start to speak to your ear. They start to speak to your desires. They start to speak to the things you want. I feel lonely too. You know, this, there's nothing wrong with that. We're grown-ups. We can make our decisions. And, the, and it just starts to battle and wind down that road. It's okay to be alone. It's okay to go on dates. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. And when you least expect it, you're in a place you didn't really plan to be. But the enemy knows where to tempt you because the enemy knows where your weaknesses are. So if the enemy knows where your weaknesses are, why don't we as believers know where our weaknesses are at? Because we're holy. Because we're too spiritual. Because we lie to ourselves. We're not honest with ourselves. This is my weakness. This is an area that I need to work on. No, we cover it up with, I'm a good person, I go to church, I serve, so I'm good. And we think that we're strong. But how is your prayer life going? How is your spiritual life going? How much of the word of God is established in your life? Because I assure you that if the word of God was established in your life, if you have a relationship with the word of God, if you have a relationship with him, if you come into communion with him on a daily basis, you wouldn't need anyone to tell you anything because the word of God itself would warn you and would tell you, this is the red flag, don't do this, don't do that, and you would make the adjustments yourself. But we don't. 
We have to wait for the mentor, the leader, or someone to come and remind you, I see something a little funny, you might want to be careful, and then you make the choice whether you listen or you don't. We take very lightly as Christians when the word of God says that the enemy is like a roaring lion roaming around us waiting to eat us, waiting to destroy, waiting to kill, waiting to just go after you so that you can abort your mission in life, which is to fulfill your purpose with God. And it starts right here. When it, when it lays there, it goes into a curated mind. What is a curated mind? It rejects the truth and allows the deceiving of evil and selfish desires. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 and 11. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. 11. And for this reason, God will send them strong disillusion that they should believe the lie. See, when you have someone that cares for you, that is trying to warn you and tell you that's not right, it's not the person himself. It's God himself sending someone to tell you, you got to watch out. You got to realize this is happening. But when you ignore that counsel and you ignore the signs and you ignore the word of God and you ignore his spirit, your mind eventually becomes curated, which rejects the truth and it only allows the desires of evil. It allows that to become your stronghold. So now you know better. Now you got this. Now you're able, now you're capable, now you don't need anyone to tell you anything because you got it. But it all started with the mind. It all started with the desires. It all started with the little door that you opened and you allowed it to creep in and to begin to establish itself in your mind and in our minds. Because we're not exempt from it. There's no one that is exempt from falling into the trap of the enemy, but we must realize it. We must know it. That's why we have to study the word of God. We need to be held accountable. Why should we be held accountable? Why should someone say something to you? Because they absolutely love you. That is why you have a leader. That is why you have a mentor. It's, that's why we all have pastors and mentors. As pastors, we have our mentor. Apostle has his mentor. But we need to be held accountable in order to protect us. If you're realizing that in your life you, you're becoming a pessimist, you're being negative, you have this fatigue, you're battling with your thoughts, then you need to realize that you are a candidate for a miracle today to deliver yourself. You are a candidate. And that's the assignment for your life today and for my life today. To recognize, to realize the signs, to realize if this is where I'm at, then maybe I need that help. To realize that if I'm, I'm struggling with my thoughts and I don't want to hear the truth anymore, I'm going to ignore the word of God. I'm going to ignore my mentor. I'm going to ignore the pastor. I'm going to ignore the message. I'm going to ignore what God is saying because I want what I want. It's up to you to recognize if that is where you are at today. And this is nothing to do with only sin. Deliverance is not just when you're in sin. Deliverance is to deliver our minds. Deliverance is to break us free from the bondage. The enemy comes to oppress. He can no longer possess us. The enemy has no control over your life. It's what you surrender to it. You are in control of what you allow the enemy to do in your life. The enemy has no power. The enemy has no authority. The enemy has nothing that he can do against you unless you have freely given that surrender. This is why God now holds us accountable. This is why this morning it's important for you to ask yourself these questions. Where am I at? Am I discouraged? Am I being negative about good change? Whether it be in your job, in your family, in ministry, it doesn't matter. We, this is all about any area of your life. Can you be honest with yourself? Can you ask yourself these questions this morning? 
Can you pull back and think, how is your thought process? What kind of thoughts are you struggling with? Are you struggling with the wondering eyes? Are you struggling with that negativity? Are you struggling with feeling like you're not good enough? Are you struggling with thinking that you're not strong enough? Are you struggling thinking that you are just perfectly fine, you don't need anything? Because that's also a struggle. Because you're in denial. We can get there very easily. We can tend to spiritualize and think that we're good. Everything is great. Everything is peachy. Life is perfect, but is it? So I'd like for you to close your eyes and just ask yourself that question. Because I want you to focus just on you this morning. If you're a pastor, a leader, a worship team member, it doesn't matter where you are in this room. Have you been struggling with anxiety? Have you been struggling with depression? Have you been struggling with the desire of even coming and seeking God? Have you been struggling with that? You don't want to pray anymore. You used to love to pray and now you don't want to. You used to love to read the Bible, now you don't. You used to love to serve, now you don't want to serve. The truth of God is being spoken and you don't care. Is your mind curated this morning? Has your heart become hardened this morning? Are you feeling tired, exhausted, burned out in ministry, at work? Because work can burn us out as well. But ministry nor work can burn you out. It's a choice. It's your personal choice. Serving and ministry is a privilege. And I learned a long time ago that one of the biggest flags that I could recognize if I was feeling a certain way about coming to church and serving is when I would say, I have to serve. I have to serve today. Instead of saying, I get to serve today. Because when I get to serve, I recognize it's such a privilege it's such an honor to come and serve someone else. It's such a privilege to walk like Jesus who came and gave of himself, not to be served, but to serve. I get to come to the house to pray with the net in the mornings. I get to serve the youth. I get to come to an inner healing retreat. I get to come and receive at a school. I get to go to hop. I get to go to practice. If your words are, I have to, then I need you to check your heart. Check your mind. Are you opening the door? Is that spiritual pride kicking in now? Especially when we grow up in church, when we're in ministry, it's easy to fall in that pattern. So that's why this is not just for just the people. This is for all of us. So ask yourself that question and recognize where you are at today. And when you're ready, I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet. You have your answer. This is personal. You know where you're at. You can stand to your feet. If you're good, hey, awesome.
But if you're recognizing some of these red flags, then how about you're honest with yourself today and allow God to hold you accountable, not to punish, not to go down on you, because that's not the kind of God we serve. We serve such a loving God that he does these things to say, I need you to wake up and allow me to be me. Let me be God in your life. Let me take the burden. Let me take the stress. Let me take the stronghold. Let me remove the barrier. Let me speak truth into your life. Let my truth become your truth. When you don't want to worship, that shows you where you are with God. When you're just dragging your feet, you don't want to do it. That shows you where you are with God. So God this morning is speaking to each and every one of us in this room. It's I want to deliver you. I want to break the bondage in your mind. I want to break the stronghold that is trying to establish itself. I want to break it all. I want to break the burden over your shoulders. I want to break the discouragement in your life. I want to break depression out of you. I want to break anxiety out of you. I want to break it. And it's by the name of Jesus. It is Jesus, the one who delivers. It is Jesus who says, for he who the Son sets free is free indeed. It is Jesus himself who wants to come and enter into your life, enter into your mind, and begin to establish the truth of God. Begin to establish his identity in you as a son, as a daughter. If there are open doors in your life, if you recognize that there are things that you're struggling with, if you recognize this morning that there's been this thought pattern that hasn't quite aligned to the will of God, but you've allowed it to stay there, then this is the moment when you lift up your hand and you talk to him. You don't wait for a pastor to lay hands on you. You deliver deliver yourself this morning you go ahead and lay hands over your mind and you say to Jesus come come and break the stronghold come this morning and break the fatigue out of my life come this morning and break depression out of my life come this morning and break anxiety out of my life come this morning and establish the truth of God for the truth of God sets us free for the truth truth of God keeps us. For the truth of God allows the will of God to be established. For the truth of God is what allows us to live the life that we are designed to live. But if this morning, if this morning, if you need the extra help, if you need that extra step, if you need someone to come into agreement with you, then the altar is open. The altar is open for you to come forward and someone's going to come and help you. But if you don't need it, that's okay. You can do this as well. You lay hands over your mind and you start to tell yourself, mind, align yourself to the will of God. Right now in the name of Jesus, I tell my body, align itself with the will of God. Right now this morning, I tell my spirit, spirit, connect with the spirit of God this morning and allow yourself to be you in my life. God, be God in my life. I need your help, Holy Spirit. I need your discernment this morning. I need your discernment this morning. I want to connect to you. I don't want to pray anymore. So this morning, I need that desire to be awakened in my life this morning. I want to pray like I've never prayed before. I want to worship like I've never worshipped before. I want to do the things that I stopped doing. I stopped serving. So I want to serve you wholeheartedly in every 
everything in anything that you allow me to do so all oh, this morning the living God is in this house and this morning he's roaming around this room and he's gonna begin to touch you and if he says you need to come forward then allow yourself to be pulled to the front allow the Spirit of God to pull you forward and break you out of the pride that you are stuck in because you don't want nobody to know what you're dealing with but God himself knows what you're dealing with so right now in the name of Jesus I break every spirit of pride in this house this morning I don't care if you're a leader I don't care if you're on the altar I don't care where you are this morning oh but the mind of Christ is going to establish itself over your life this morning so come on come on and allow the Holy Spirit to touch you to pull you to grab you to fill you to refresh you to empower you to give you that authority to give you that authority that you need take a hold of your life you take your own authority in the name of Jesus in the name of the living God in the name of Jesus Himbramando rocro y ere preke andara crasere Humbramando rocro andara pra kayere crendo romoshire Humbramando ere crendo rocro sere preke yara Himbramando rocro condo romoshire cre Himbramando rocro andere preke shire crendo rocro condo ramasere cre Himbramando rocro koshire crendo rocro Himbramando rocro y ere preke yara cra Himbramando rocro shire crendo rocro koyere cre Himbramama ma shire prekendo ro Spirit of truth, the spirit of truth be revealed this morning over your life Himbramando rocro shire Oh the Holy Spirit comes upon you now In the name of Jesus and establish itself Establish itself over your mind And break every stronghold We break every stronghold right now In the name of Jesus Every high thing has to come down Everything that has exalted itself It breaks right now in the name of Jesus We are a house of deliverance We will be set free this morning We will be set free this morning If you need to repent The altar is open Because maybe you did allow for other things to come to you but this morning in the name of Jesus we break it right now we break everything and anything that does not align itself to the will of God and we establish the truth of God upon the life upon the life that hears this voice this morning in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we break the patterns we break the patterns that even come from generational curses now in the name of Jesus, every generational curse breaks, breaks in the name of Jesus. Every thought, every thought, we take it captive to the obedience of Christ. We take it captive to the obedience of Christ now. In the name of Jesus, an awakening, 